something that I'm hearing is a lot of this, um, if I had my ears on as some of the audience members, sounds like you need a lot of resources, a lot of money, and a lot of knowledge. So I think one thing that would be interesting to discuss is how do you have a smart social media or viral marketing campaign with extremely limited resources? And the most valuable resource, I think everybody will agree, is time, is the other one. So how are you guys... Um, multitasking and capturing for multiple platforms when you have limited time with talent? And then how are you how are you guys handling that challenge of limited resources or what do you recommend for some of these people that may not have a Warner Brothers behind them to help? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always a huge challenge. I mean, no matter what your organization, whatever the scale it is, you can never do as much as you would like to mm -hmm. be doing. Um, something that can really amplify a small campaign is doing something that's press worthy. Uh, the best example, recent example that comes to mind for me is the campaign for Ex Machina. And uh, Elisa Vikander as a robot uh, matching up with people on Tinder uh, mm -hmm. probably didn't scale to that many people on Tinder in Austin, but man, that's a good press story. Mm -hmm. Man, that has all the perfect press hooks, and it went everywhere press-wise. And for a campaign of that size to get that kind of press coverage for that kind of stunt, that's really meaningful stuff. But it's tricky. Yeah. Anybody else? Well, one of the things that we were doing uh, for this new movie that I just did is the Phoenix Incident. It's based on the largest mass UFO sighting in U.S. history, which was the Phoenix Lights. And so here is a inherently viral uh, idea anyway, because everyone wants to know if aliens exist, if UFOs are real, was there a real military cover-up? And so we structured this story as this missing persons campaign where there was this investigative journalist who was investigating the disappearance of these four guys. And the first thing I did was I started creating these websites for these family members that were for missing persons. We created, uh, if you look up maricopamissing.com, it's the Arizona Missing Database. And it's this very real looking website. And I just you know, built it on my weekends. Mm -hmm. It's not like this is high finance, but it's very real. And here we were not trying to hoax the audience, but we're trying to bring them into our characters in our world. And in doing so, we started to build up this sort of investigation that there were these guys that happened to go missing the night of the largest UFO sighting in US history, and they happened to be there. So that engagement, which doesn't cost a lot, is viral in nature. So mm -hmm. you're piggybacking onto a viral idea that people are already talking about, and you start to establish your pillars of who's gonna be behind your product. In our case, we know there was a UFO audience. Uh, we knew that there was gonna be sort of this thriller, crime investigation, uh, uh, sort of uh, ultimately horror thriller audience. And then my background in video games, we knew we were gonna have a video game audience as well, but we didn't wanna give away that our cast came from the video game space, that I come from video games. We wanted to have people believe this was a real investigation. Uh, a year, about a year ago, we got this uh, very scary email from the legal department from one of our ISPs. Yeah, I was gonna ask. And because uh, we've got about two dozen websites up now as part of this viral campaign, and we've tracked about 20 million views. Um, and we had an, this private investigator that we had sort of established as a character in the movie. He is starting to tweet out this footage about these missing guys and these UFO cases and starting to connect all the different components of this cult that might have been implicated and all these uh, uh, unexplained cattle deaths and these sightings and all these things are converging onto what ultimately becomes our movie, which is sort of a docu-thriller. And uh, we get this letter from the Department of Justice threatening us yeah. <laughs> with a uh, five-year imprisonment and $500,000 fine yeah. because they believe that we're bounty hunters trying to track down these missing guys who are our cast. And, uh, <laughs> and we were terrified because even when we went for script clearance on the film, our own legal department that was clearing the script actually rejected the script because they said, they cited all about yeah. a dozen different resources saying, well, you gotta get the life rights to all these families, to these guys. And we had to go back and tell them that, that those were all of our websites for this viral campaign. <laughs> and even the legal departments had no idea. So, but that's, that it is very viral in nature because yeah. people really wanna believe. And, it's, and again, it's not trying to be a hoax. It's not trying to disrespect your audience. It's trying to bring them into your story. And I think that's, you know, to me, that's the most encouraging thing that the audience really does want to find out you know, more about your characters, mm -hmm. about your world, and if you can just empower them uh, and allow them to share that with the audience, they'll continue your social media for, for forever. It's I also wouldn't underestimate the importance of, I'm oh, sorry, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, underestimate the importance of 
personal interaction, even if it seems like it's happening on a very micro level. I mean, you know, the Orange campaign I referenced earlier, that was built on like a fan by fan reply, and you would see it go like, you know, you tweet something at them and they would like it, they would retweet it, and then they would follow you. And it was like, as granular as it could possibly be because there was no show yet and no one knew what they were talking about. But you could get that piece. And, and we do it on a larger scale with things like American Horror Story. You know, it's it's tricky these days to get people to tune into linear television, uh, you know, when you're like, I need you on Wednesday night at whatever to be tuning in because that's how we're going to get some buzz around this. So what we started doing were things like if you're tweeting about Horror Story, we create personalized assets for fans um, in real time and tweet them out during the show. So like for example, um, Hotel was the last season. We would do hotel keys that would have like the fans, you know, name on them and tweet them back at them during the show. And you almost always saw those instantly become their profile pictures. Um, you know, so but that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, Again, you, you have people out there that are waiting to be acknowledged by you, um, and you know it's it's partnering with your fans too. And the more that you do that, and people will expect to see that then from you, and they will try to they'll tweet a ton about your your film or your show because they want that recognition from you. So this, even on, you know with a small team or a small budget, that's usually a good way to go. And the other thing I was gonna say is, um, so my team is really small, and we manage all of our social accounts for all of our series, so and all of our stunts, and um, we sort of. So social media is in my job description and it's in my title, but the important thing that we do is we have like team social at the network, which basically means that everybody has to be helping out social. So if our PR team is with talent and they're in New York, they take photos and they text them to us for us to post on social. Or if somebody's at a photo shoot or, um, you know, with talent um, at an event, they'll capture content and they send it to us because most people don't have gigantic social media teams. And so it really, everybody can help. And even we'll say to our graphics team, if you're making a cool animation for 25 days of Christmas, why don't you export that as a video and we can put it on our social accounts. And so I think that everybody at an organization, no matter what their title is, needs to be thinking, how can I help social media? So this needs to be infused actually into the writer's room, executive producers, because when you're filming a show, you might have a prop, and um, if, you, if you can take photos of that prop, it could be we had an invitation um, on, on our show, Pretty the Liars, and somebody knew, well, why don't we actually get that art file and save it as a JPEG so that we can post it on social? So it's actually when you're filming a movie or when you're filming series, everybody needs to have that lens on. Like and, and and be thinking about it because there are props you can save for giveaways on social. There are photos that you could be taking of those props before they're destroyed. There are photos you could be taking um, of the cast members. And essentially, if you're not thinking about it in real time, those opportunities will go away once you know once something's no longer filming or once um, or once um, you know props have been given back or thrown away. And so I think that like having this team social lens, it's like at at the network at the show productions and sometimes you know our executive producers have great ideas for social campaigns and we're open to hearing them and good ideas can come from anywhere so I think this idea that like oh you actually have to have a massive social media team is, um, is sort of like misguided you actually need to have everybody thinking about social um, so that's like the best the best that you can get like our programming team when they're reading scripts they are reading it with a lens of what can we gather for social what's the opportunity in that script um, is there a campaign that we can do around something Thing, and that's truly how you have successful social media campaigns when it's not just coming from the marketing team.